Hello everybody and welcome back to Space Engine and right now we are right outside of a moon orbiting some kind of gas giant orbiting some kind of where's the star orbiting some kind of mysterious star and today we are going to look for planets that have life that's apparently a real thing in this game uh, we're going to try and actually explore deeply into some of these planets and see if they can support life I don't even know how to look for them I'm going to try and figure out how to find them and we are going to Find some! This one has a lot of moons, too. Okay, this one is just a very, very bright planet, and I just totally landed on this planet. Oh my god. <laughs> just imagine you're just in a- I mean, this, I guess, looks like it would be somewhere in the Arctic. What is- It's 407 degrees Celsius on this planet. And it's just nothing but whiteness all around here. You can see a couple of the nearby orbiting moons. And let's just take off and see what this place looks like, you know, from an aerial view. Like, almost like a... But what's the gravity here? Gravity here is 0.32 Gs. Okay, so that's a little less than Mars. Uh, in terms of, like, how heavy you would be on this planet. My god, what's the atmosphere? The atmosphere is actually very thin, but it feels... It feels like it's super thick. Or it looks like it, at least. It reminds me of Mars a little bit. It's like a white Mars. Atmosphere comp composition is SO2. So is that, uh... Is that sulfur dioxide? I, it's, I've never, like, actually taken a chemistry class in my life. <laughs> I've taken, all I know from chemistry is like 10th grade biology, but I've, I'm, I've taken a lot of physics courses, not really chemistry. <laughs> I said, you can get, you can make so many wallpapers for your desktop just from this game. I'm like, look at that view. We're in a nebula, we have a star. It looks like 2001 A Space Odyssey. It's like, there's never a bad view. I want to go to a famous star. Star Epsilon Eretes. Star Betelgeuse. Let's go to Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse is supposed to be a big star. Oh my god, it's a massive star. What's right here? Scorched desert. <laughs> now is this like Betelgeuse, planet Betelgeuse 1 and 2? Jesus, it's just like a red molten planet. Staring at that. Imagine waking up to that every single day. I mean, we wouldn't, but just imagine something like that being in the sky. <laughs> Orbiting a star like that. Like, this star, it's not even a sphere. You actually see, like, w w imperfections, I guess? Like, canyons? Star canyons of, like, nuclear reactions? A nuclear canyon? Betelgeuse 8, super far out from the planet. This actually it seems like it's a relatively safe distance from... I mean, how far are we right now? We're 62 astronomical units out. This is... Oh wait, from, from this planet. How far is this planet from the Betelgeuse star? That seems like that, like, I mean, it seems like that, that would be the size of uh, our sun in our solar system, relatively speaking, so we could potentially have some life. I mean, what's, this is 413 degrees Celsius on this gas giant, but maybe one of the moons has the right conditions. Oh, temperate Oceana planet. It's got uh, atmospheric pressure of 11 atmospheres. I think you could stand on this planet, I think. Unless 11 atmospheres would kill you, I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not sure, like, what's the human tolerable uh, atmospheric limit. But if 11 atmospheres wouldn't really hurt you, I mean, you would probably- Your ears would probably be popping like crazy. Uh, but if you can adjust to that, you could actually walk on this planet with a, a gas mask without any kind of thermal protection. Any fancy thermal protection, you might need, like, a jacket or something. But the thing is, this is a- this is an ocean planet. I'm assuming this is where the poles are, I guess. It even has a tilt. So that means it has seasons. I think I think they're gonna be very extreme seasons because Earth's tilt is more like kind of like at that angle. Like, I don't know what the exact angle it is, but it's kind of like that. But this is kind of like this. So they're gonna it's gonna be a lot more extreme summers and extreme winters. Ooh, and what's this over here? Betelgeuse 8.3. So is, are these like orbiting each other? Whoa! This is a temperate desert, and it's at minus minus not point nine. Uh, degrees Celsius. Greenhouse effect makes it 1.2 degrees Celsius. It's like we have Earth and Mars just uh, in a binary orbit with each other. Atmospheric composition is CO2 and SO2. 0 0.10A atmospheres. It's a very thin atmosphere. It's about 10% of Earth's atmosphere. I think you probably wouldn't need a spacesuit even on this. Now it has much less gravity. It's 0.27 Gs, but that's fine. So even on this one, it's like you would have to wear like a heavy jacket. Or no, actually you just have to wear a jacket. You wear a hoodie or something on this planet. And you could probably stand on it. It's a very thin atmosphere. <laughs> oh, actually, I think we act, we would need a spacesuit here. The lowest tolerable pressure of air is about 0 0.47 atmospheres. Really, about half an atmosphere. Well, I mean, unless unless that means like if it takes into account breathing, because I know like if you go somewhere to Mount Everest, 
you eventually you get to the point where you need an oxygen tank because the air is too thin. But I, th I think that's just more when it comes to just breathing in air so that your body can function. But like in terms of just atmospheric pressure of holding your body together and, you know, not expanding out and however, whatever happens. Uh, at 0 0.35 atmospheres, life is impossible. Hmm. So I'm going to assume if if you can't survive in 10% of an atmosphere, we probably can't survive in 11 atmospheres, so we probably would need spacesuits on both of these planets, so that makes me very, very sad. <laughs> what I am liking, though, and this is like one of the coolest things ever, is that if we found, for lack of a better term, a habitable gas giant, where a gas giant falls in that habitable zone of a planet, because then that could mean there could be a, a ton of moons orbiting that one gas giant, and it's almost like you have this really cool local neighborhood of habitable planets, rather than, you know how like a distance between Earth and Mars, you have to travel great distances to go to these places, but imagine having multiple planets, moons technically, multiple moons uh, orbiting a gas giant, and you're actually within a, like a really pretty close distance to each other, like, you know, Earth and moon distance, or maybe a little bit more than that. We're moving on to greater systems. I'm gonna try and search a little closer to the center of the galaxy, or maybe like within one of these bands or something. Cause I'm, I wanna see if that's possible to be so close to the center, and then you just see something like that like every single day, and it's a much brighter night sky. So if we find a habitable planet somewhere out here, knowing like oh, there's a ton of star clusters uh, around here, and just knowing how many black holes are nearby, it's like, ooh, spooky. Gravity of this is 2.14 g, so actually this is about twice as massive as Earth. Cool, so that's, that's fine, those are fine conditions. So you mean to tell me that this is 500 degrees Celsius, and we got liquid water? Okay, okay. So I think what's allowing this planet to have liquid water at 570 degrees Celsius is because it has 620, oh sorry, 672 atmospheres. It's probably increasing the boiling point of water uh, to something ridiculous like 570 degrees Celsius or more. That is cool. Okay, well, let's get out of this F2 menu. So we found a temperate climate. It's got 67 atmospheres, atmospheric pressure, 67 times the pressure of our atmosphere. So I don't think we, we could live on this planet, but its temperature is very nice. 21 degrees Celsius. Entering the thick atmosphere. I just love how this has rings. I mean, that'd be so cool if Earth had rings, just seeing that. It'd be like living in Halo every single day, and it'd be very easy to tell if you're standing on the equator or if you're at North Pole. Not that it's hard today, but, you know, immediately just looking in the sky. Okay, so, yeah, this atmosphere is not very Earth-like at all. Actually, you can't, ooh, well, I guess you can kind of see. Oh, damn, we're in a binary system. I didn't even realize that. I thought it was just one star. It looked like one star. Okay, then that is awesome. You got rings in the sky. <laughs> oh, now we're on the surface. This is the actual sky. That is cool. You got two suns, rings streaking across the sky. You got a moon. The school. The sky is so much more interesting to look at. Like, this game is amazing. <laughs> like it. It generated this to this level. Holy shit! I'm gonna like. I'm gonna fly over here. Okay, now it's getting to be like nighttime. Yeah, this, this place has pink sunsets. That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, it's just awesome. I mean, anything that's different from Earth is going to be awesome to me, as you as you can tell. Oh my god, it's green. It's a temper. Oh my god. There's land. Is there water as well? Planet RS84743149646878143149 Temperate Terra with life. Organic unicellular. Marine life, so cells in the water. Orbital period is 1.5 years. Rotational period is 19 hours. You got a 19 hour day. And we've got oxygen and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Gravity is 0.59479 Gs, okay. Well, let's land on this thing. There's like volcanoes right there. Wow. Welcome to an alien planet. This looks like Namek! This is Namek from Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> That's awesome. We're gonna find the Dragon Balls. Will they find the Dragon Balls? Find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. Wow. Oh my god, the volcano. Look at the lava. So what's the atmosphere like here? The at yeah, the atmosphere is 0. 0.685. So you could you could survive on this planet uh, w without a spacesuit. Uh, with the, the temperature, it's 2.9 degrees Celsius. Wear like a little bit of a hoodie. 
maybe a gas mask if the air is just not good enough for you, but that's it. You could totally do that on this planet. And the gravity is not even that much lower than Earth's. It's it's 60%. It's it's higher than Mars's. Oh, what's that? Oh, that's cool. Is that at a moon? Temperate Selena. Does it have life? <laughs> It'd be great if that had life. Yes, I'm gonna name it. It's gonna officially be Namek. Namek! Real object. Here you can find the Dragon Balls. Yeah, that'd be great if it uploaded to servers or something. But if it was like that, then there's probably like 24,000 Namics out there <laughs> in this game. And where shall we go next? F2. Oh, this one's awesome. This one is a lot more Earth-like looking at least. It has like a white atmosphere. It's got oxygen and CO2 in it. Marine, um, single-celled life. Got a hurricane right there. Okay, well, let's check out to see what this one looks like. Let's go during the daytime. It looks like it's a thick atmosphere. Is the atmosphere thick? It's got 4.4 atmospheres. Maybe you can live in that. I'm not sure. It's got one moon. It's very like Earth. 20 degrees Celsius. It's like a it's like a white atmosphere. It's almost like a, a, a forever and overcast day on this planet. That's what it seems like. But other than that, it's like you have water. You got oceans. I'm gonna go into like the outer fringes of the galaxy and see if there's any any life just kind of lurking out here, way in the back of the the Milky Way galaxy. What is this? Whoa! This one is different. This one's like a whoa! What the hell is that? That's like half the planet is just engulfed by a hurricane. And it's a very dim star too here. It's minus, it's got CO2, O2, SO2, unicellular life. Half the planet seems like it's an ice world. Oh, maybe that's it. All of this is an ice world. Is it tidally locked? It might be tidally locked. Yeah, solar day is infinity. This is a tidally locked planet to this star. And so only this face of the planet gets, <laughs> wait, only this face of the planet gets any daylight. Well, the rest of the planet is forever in darkness and therefore is a frozen world. It looks like a like a cup of coffee. <laughs> that's what it looks like. It's the coffee planet. Maybe that's what I'll name it. It's coffee world. The world's the, the universe's biggest Starbucks. Oh my god, look at this. What's the atmosphere like? The gravity is 1.896 G's. 0.633 atmospheres. You could totally stand in this place. What's the eye of the storm like? It's like it's a black hole. That's pretty cool. It's like you just look up straight up in the eye of the storm, and then you have the star. One thing I also didn't notice is like while well, I was saying is like this this side never gets any daylight. Conveniently on this side of the planet, we have another star. So it's like forever in lightness, but it's not as much lightness on this side. This side is a lot more light, but it's still kind of dim. I don't know if this one's not really tidally locked to this one at all, so it's not really. It'll be temporary on this side, but it'll be the same on this side. Can I speed things up? So this is the storm. Okay, actually, it has a... An, oh, that's the... I see here. Oh, Jesus Christ. So the planet is orbiting that way in the direction of this star. So that star is moving towards this star. And so now this side of the planet is going to get even more sunlight. Is any of this changing? This is Coffee Planet. Universe's best coffee. It's a real object. Very real. It's out there in the universe. I know it. <laughs> just gonna take a little peek, that's all. And you know, just watch the light bend and all that jazz and... <laughs> I'd like to just scoot on by. It's like I just kind of get deflected out.